Hi, go on FaceTime you, Randy. Randy. No, she's no, she's listening too. There she is. Let's pray real quick, okay? Okay. Lord, we thank you for a, a, a busy week, and we pray that you bless us tonight as we try and learn something here from um, your word here. I pray that there be some insights and wisdom we have, and you know, you pray you be in our midst, and uh, so we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, Daniel 3. Daniel 3. Just kind of pick up where we left off. First, first, let me shut the door real quick. There we go. No. Um, I want to want to read uh, one through three. Anybody have an opportunity to read at all? This one, one through three. Megan's good at reading. No, I mean, does any, did anybody have opportunity to read this at all um, ahead of time? Not, did not we, this week. Not this week, Dar. It's been a busy week. No doubt. It's, yeah, and it's a pretty easy chapter, I think, too. It's pretty straightforward. Um, if you want to go, Meg? Okay. You said Daniel 3, 1 to 3? Yeah. Can you turn that off? No. All right. King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, made an image of gold 60 cubits high and six cubits wide and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. He then summoned the sat satraps, perfect uh, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other pro um, provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So the satraps perfects governors advisors treasurers judges magistrates and all the others other pro, uh, provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the image that king nebuchadnezzar had set up and they stood before it okay <laughs> so here we are um seemingly the next chapter and here he is uh after the previous dream interpretation from da da Daniel, and he's setting his own image up. Um, his entire image, instead of stopping at the head, he does the entire body of gold. And uh, I think it said the height was 60 cubits and the width is six cubits. Any idea how tall that is? 90 feet, nine, 90 feet high, nine feet wide. Yeah, so it seems to be like a, uh, I think a, I get huge. a story is considered what, 10 feet, I think. It would be like nine stories high and only nine feet, kind of small on the bottom, or the, the, the width's kind of small, but yeah, nine, nine stories high. Now, um, six or six, zero, um, what's that the number of? Anybody remember? Man. Right. And that was in particular from that guy's book that I, I know he's done an exhaustive study of the numbers of the Bible. This is what he had to say about six. He said, regarding six, it has to do with man. It's the number of imperfection, the human number, the number of man as destitute of God, without God and without Christ. Hmm. That's how he views it from pulling out all the various uh, verses and looking at the numbers. And that's just one of the numbers. Um, there, there's another, a different version of the Old Testament called the Sep, Septuagint. Anybody ever heard that? Heard of yeah. it? No. You yeah. said yes? Uh-huh. Okay. It's basically a Hebrew Bible that was translated into Greek in the second century BC, second or third century BC, and adopted by the early church. The Septuagint is considered uh, highly accurate, although I think the versions that we use today are, you know, are most people don't really reflect back on the Septuagint. Septuagint, but certain areas of the, as you read the Septuagint, they add 
various things to what we're reading. And one of the things that it says in the Septuagint is that in Daniel 3, 1, it says um, it's Nebuchadnezzar's 18th year. Oh. Okay, so if you figure chapter one was when they were taken off, chapter two was probably year five, four or five-ish, and here we are in 18. Potentially, I'm not suggesting that's hard and fast, but it does give you a little bit of a time frame. He didn't seemingly run right out and create the image, but he did it over the course of time. Now, one other thing, talking about numbers, if this is his 18th year, um, how does six and 18 connect? Why, it's three sixes. <laughs> six, 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 huh? <laughs> Ironically. It's very um, ironic. I didn't, it's funny, Dee, I didn't think of the six, six, six. I just thought it was three times six. And Me I, too. <laughs> I didn't think it had anything to do with that, but it could very well could be. That's mm -hmm. funny. Though. Anyway, um, all of his leaders are invited to come and stand before the image. And for some reason in verse two and three, the whole list of people is repeated uh, multiple why? times. I don't, yeah. I don't know why, but now, um, so this represents man, Nebuchadnezzar, building his kingdom of God on earth that he believed he's been given or entrusted with. And I'm guessing if we're building up upon chapter two, he's seemingly taking the dream that he had in the previous chapter and making it come to pass in some form or fashion. It seems, seems like, it. Yeah. Didn't you say that that was like 12, 13 years prior, right? Maybe he, who knows, but yeah, it seems maybe he waited. If, there's no information on it, but maybe he waited and said, well, it isn't happening. Maybe I need to build it myself. I, who the heck knows? <laughs> He's dumb. Yeah. But anyway, four through seven, somebody wants to read that. Um, oh, I was going to say Donna can read it, but I don't see Donna. There she is. Uh, then the herald loudly proclaimed, nations and peoples of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, um, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down in worship will immediately be thrown into the blazing furnace. Therefore, as soon as you, they heard the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, and all kinds of music, all the nations and peoples of every language fell down and worshiped the image of the king, gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Now, in verse four, it, it says, it is commanded to you, O peoples, nations, and languages. Um, I was just, I, as I read it, I was sort of scratching my head since primarily the only people seemingly there right now are his, his leaders, right? His, his, all, his, all the king's men, basically. That, hmm. that we know of, right? I mean, maybe there's more. We just don't know about it. And can I ask a question? Yeah. Is, isn't he doing this in his land? So who are all the people and nations and like, who's he proclaiming to in a loud voice that can hear him that talks in a different language? Do you know what I mean? What about all the people that he has taken as he's conquered? Like he took oh, okay. the Hebrews and they're part of the, uh, what are they part of, Dare? What Babylon? Did he, the Babylonian. Now, what, what did he promote them to? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They're... Um... They're the rulers in the province of Babylon versus Daniel who worked with the king, like, I guess, on the overall larger kingdom of Babylon, but they're just in the province in that area. But so, yeah, yeah I agree. Uh, who's he talking to? It very well could be that he has multiple nations or multiple people that he's taken and put somehow in his kingdom to work. Um, but it does seem to be like, you know, it seemed to be a limited amount of nations here. Uh, yeah. 
And like when you talk loudly to them, you're not going to be on TV. You're not, you don't have a microphone, right? Right. How do they hear it? And how do all of them fall down all at once? What, like how, I don't get it. I don't know. Well, the Herald's, the Herald's pro proclaiming this, whoever that is, the person that speaks and I guess decrees like the edicts or whatever. Uh, so he's the one that begins this. So I don't know, maybe there's some form that they have that, everybody can hear, but I'm not really sure. Um, it also says, the Herald said, whenever you hear in these instruments slash music um, fall down and worship the image the king has set up. And then he says, whoever doesn't is thrown into the fiery furnace in the same hour. Um, I yeah, Gusty has a question. It, at the end of two, we're talking about the dream. Right, you're talking about the dream, and and they promoted Daniel, and Nebuchadnezzar fell down and offered a, a worship to Daniel's God, and then you start this out, and he made he made the image that he dreamed of. Right. Like what? Right. What's he thinking? And well, what's he thinking? Yeah, He's a madman, isn't he? Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, I, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that too. In, wow, I didn't even think of that. In the midst of this, but. Yeah, didn't he learn his lesson or at least learn something at the end of the previous dream or whatever? You know, it like it was a long time, though. Well, he was probably like, oh, wait, I was the gold. I got to build that gold. Yeah, but Gusty, you're right. Like, in his dream, the whole thing falls apart. Right. It's destroyed and right. blown away. So but why would he want the, the statue to be built? Right. Well, he, he couldn't remember his dream, right? No, so Daniel's the dream. All those years passed, he forgot it was a dream. And in his mind, maybe he <laughs> thought it was instructions <laughs> to build the statue. Funny. You know how our minds <laughs> Yeah, I agree. It, who knows? I, he's, he's, a, he's a wacky guy. Yeah. Uh, anyone notice this in verse 7? It says, uh, he, he says, therefore, at that time, and all peoples, all the peoples heard the sound of the music and instruments they fell down and worshiped the image but it says it changes from all o peoples nations and languages to all the peoples nations and languages like the phrasing changes ever so slightly from you know o, or I mean, o peoples nations to all the peoples is this any different in anybody else's wait what what's the difference tell me again in verse Nations, people of every language, it says in four. What's it say? Mine says nations and peoples of every language. Right. And then in seven, it says all the nations and peoples of every language. Yeah, it just inserts the word all. Um, which, oh, all of the nations. Yeah, you're right. It does. Like, is is that a one of those hidden kind of mentions? Because we know what Babylon morphs into. We've spoken about it before. Um, I, I'm just, I, I just noticed that, and I was like, wait a minute. What did he say before? Is that one of those hidden things in there? Maybe. Um, okay, so we see that clearly he's been deceived or. He's grossly misinterpreted or misunderstood the meaning of the dream in the previous chapter. Right. Like yeah. how, like what, what is he, what are some of the things you can think that he's done? Well, he's having everybody bow down to his image. Okay. But the dream was symbolic, right? But he's yeah. making it literal. Right. right. Okay. Anything else? How about the head? Hint, hint. What well, with the gold? Yeah, You're talking about the gold. How he made yeah. the whole thing gold? Yeah, he made the whole thing gold. Oh, it. Donna said that earlier. Yeah, I know. How dumb is he? He's like, I'll just be the whole thing. The but other in chapter two, didn't he not listen to Daniel? As soon as Daniel said the dream, didn't he like not go into it any further? Right. Yeah. Right. I he just kind of like he cut him off. Like, oh, thank you. So I mean, yeah, yeah he never got it from the get go. Wasn't right. even like he forgot. He just never understood it. And, and not only that, but the first thing Daniel says in the previous chapter about the dream is that it, it happens in the latter days. You know, so maybe he, 
maybe he said, I'll wait, um, you know, 10, 15 years, and then yeah. that's considered the latter days. But uh, yeah. it doesn't seem like he's allowed the time go, to go by. Yeah. And, and here's another, another thing. Uh, where did the forced obedience at the risk of death in the fiery furnace, where did that come from? That wasn't right. in the dream, was it? No, no. It had nothing to do with it. And like, why? I don't know. And what about the music? Where did that, where did that yeah, come what from? Yeah, what is that? I, I'm only going to, I'm only going to, we'll talk about it in a little bit, but I'm not sure where it comes from. Hmm. So he forced, well, I just said the forced, forced worship. The only thing you could look back at the dream and say they seemingly did it with force was the, anyone remember? They subdued and they broke in pieces. One of the, one of the metals, anybody remember which one? The feet, which was the um, clay and what was the other thing? Well, that was eventually broken, but what was the metal that, that subdued and broke things in pieces? I thought it was a rock. Yeah, it was a rock. The rock did, but they described the iron as subduing and breaking things wow. in pieces. The, the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The kingdom that would, is, is that how they describe the kingdom? The yeah. Roman kingdom? The Rome? Romans? We assume that that's it. Yeah, I mean. If so literally, yeah. maybe, but figuratively, maybe. Something right. different. Yeah. yeah. Okay, 8 through 12. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What, do you have? <laughs> what are we laughing at? I raised my hand. Oh, go ahead, Meg. <laughs> Does anybody know how to act, like make this smaller so I could look look at the Bible on the um on the screen? Corinne, I'm might. using my phone, so I don't know. Yeah, Corinne, I, I had to I had to give my phone to the, my tiny child. Oh, how can she make it smaller <laughs> so that uh make what? Uh, she wants to make like if this is her, make it smaller so she can see her Bible. How about view? Oh wait, I think I just oh. got it. Oh, she all right, got I got it. it. All you have to do is tap the two boxes. Okay. okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry, Dar. Okay. Eight through twelve. Yo, son. Eight through twelve. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, "May the king live forever." Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews who have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Okay. Um, Bunch of tattletales. What, did, what were they called at the beginning of your verse, Chaldeans? Were they the... No. Astrologers. Astrologers. Okay. Mine were, mine were the Chaldeans of whom in the previous chapter were the people that told the king. Remember, they're the ones that started talking in the Babylonian tongue in verse four in chapter two. And they're the ones yeah. that told the king, yeah, there's no way anybody's going to be able to tell this yeah. truth. Mm -hmm. So and why the, might they, go ahead, dude. I was just going to say, my footnote does say Chaldeans. Why might they want to strike back at these guys? Jealousy, yeah, anger. Made them look dumb. Right. Made them look really, yeah, Daniel made them look foolish. And I guess mm -hmm. by implication or by friendship or association, um, you know, all these guys do too. Uh, and and yeah, this is where I, I made a little mention here. This is, they said, there's not a man upon the earth that can show the king the matter, the, show the king's matter, and that there is no other that can show it before the king except God who whose dwelling is not with flesh. Now, let's get back to the music. Any other thoughts about why he would incorporate music or what, what music might mean to you or? Is it like worship? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, wasn't the devil in charge of music? Wasn't that his gig before he was kicked out of heaven? 
I think in, Eze in Ezekiel 28, D, there is reference to something along those lines, and I did read it, um, but I didn't go into detail as to the, the meaning. Um, it might be. I mean, I've heard that people say that before. I never heard that. No, I thought that he was, um, that was his gig. The music was his gig in heaven. <clears throat> yeah, I can't remember what, what it was. I don't know. Uh, that uh, that's why I was tying it to the music here. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> no, I I think you may have a valid point. I I know when I looked at that. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to read that verse. I think it's 28 Ezekiel 28, like verse 13. Um, okay, this is um, this is a quick verse, and we'll just interject this because I saw this in the midst of uh, the study. But it says. Thou wast in Eden, every precious, now he's talking about Satan here, who was in Eden, the garden of God, every precious stone was thy covering, um, he goes through all the bunch of stones, and then this, the workmanship of thy tabrets and thy pipes was in thee, in the day that thou wast created, they were prepared. Huh. So the thought could be, let's see, a tabret, according to the, is a tambourine. Oh. And, and the pipes could be. An organ? Mean, sounds like, I mean, it could be. It's, it's, oh, it could be a horn, like a bagpipe. <laughs> what, what's the verse down? Ezekiel what? 28.13. Mine says, you were in Eden. The garden of God, every precious stone adorned you, and then went through this precious stones. Um, your setting and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. It doesn't say anything about pipes. Yeah, where's it? Yeah. Mine's the ASV. Um, and I just looked at one of the concordances that said the word pipes that's used could be flutes or uh, musical pipes whatever they would resolve in. So could be that. I it's mean, certainly, certainly could be that. What else does music appeal to? Hmm. Emotions. Yes. Bingo. Um, you're, you're like carnal, your sensual self. Hmm. It does for me. That's for darn sure. Um, so it kind of ties into some area that really, for some reason, music is able to write, get to write the heart of something and bring things. I don't, I, don't, I can't even quite explain it, but I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Like today yeah. when the kids were fighting and screaming, I was like, Alexa, play Valentine's Day music. <laughs> but yeah, it made us all calm. Serenity now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's go 13 through 15 back in Daniel. All right, my turn. Uh huh. All right. Oh, wait, let me just make sure I'm in three. Okay, Daniel, three. You said 13 to 16? 15. 15. Uh, then Nebuchadnezzar, furious with rage, summoned uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is it true that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden statue I've set up? Now, if you are ready, as soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the statue I have made. But if you refuse to worship, you will be thrown at once into the blazing fiery furnace then what God will be able to do and then oh then what God will be able to deliver you from my hands oh little do you know now in in verse uh, 13 it says in rage and fury he commands them to bring three men to him so he violent anger but he he seems to uh, have the violent anger as he's commanding these guys to be brought to him wherever, wherever this is, whether this is, you know, he's sitting in his booth in the stadium where this is happening or whether it's long since dismissed and he hears the rumor and then he calls them in and asks them. 
I, I really don't know. Um, I assume that this was separate, but it could be in the midst of the same time. But he has the violent anger here. So we, we just made mention of how these three guys were promoted in the last verse over the affairs of uh, the kingdom, not the entire king, kingdom, but the province, as it says in the last verse in chapter two. Um, another thing that I had read, these guys may, even though they, um, Daniel was worked like seemingly wherever the king was or whatever, they may have worked under him because he was the one that wanted them promoted in the end of the last. So there's some commentaries that say maybe they worked under Daniel. I don't really know, but. Yeah. And um, then why didn't he call Daniel? Why did he all only call Shad Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Well, that is. That's a who question. they tattled on. <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody knows where Daniel is in the story. Oh, Yeah. Where did he go? Was he at? Maybe he was out of the country. I, who knows? Maybe he already went in the furnace. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> he um. Now Nebuchadnezzar seems to say in which verses um, he says, "Did you?" He asked them, "Did you not serve my God intentionally?" He seems to say, almost as if he's giving them like one other shot, like one one chance, despite the anger that he seemed to show in the beginning of verse 13. So he tells them, okay, when you hear the music fall down or I'm gonna throw you in the furnace, furnace at the same hour. Um, but why does Nebuchadnezzar say, who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Right. And mine says, what God will rescue, be able to rescue you from my hand? So why does he say it that way? What what do you think he's he thinks his position is? Greater than any other God. Right, because what was given to him last chapter, the kingdom, right? God gave him the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So he makes the decisions because he's, I guess, the king of the kingdom. And here he's creating the stature. So who do these guys think they are to... You know, who's going to rescue me? I'm the head of all these other gods. Mm. Like Meg, you said last last week, Meg, about um, all the lesser gods or whatever. Yeah. And he seems to think that there is a whole bunch of different gods. Of course, he remembers Daniel from last Daniel's and theirs from last week. But maybe he's forgotten the strength that he commands. But he seems to think the kingdom belongs to him, maybe. Mm -hmm. um so let's we have we have nine minutes let's 16 through 18 shadrach meshach and abednego replied to him king nebuchadnezzar we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter if we are thrown into the blazing furnace the god we serve is able to deliver us from it and he will deliver us from your ma majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Smack! They told him. <laughs> <laughs> I love now, that. <laughs> notice, I don't know if you noticed the words that the Chaldeans, when they talk directly with the king, was. Anybody notice what they say? They start with like a little phrase before they speak. Anybody May the remember? king live forever. Yes. These guys sure don't. <laughs> they don't start with that. They said, we have yeah, no need don't. to answer. Imagine the, like uh, the audacity. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. are not my boss. Yeah. I love it. I mean, but, that is gutsy. Think yeah, about it. Yeah. It is. He's saying to them, I'll kill you. And they're going, so kill us. We won't worship your gods. We and won't Neb bow down to your ridiculous image. And, Neb and, Neb and their reaction says to Nebuchadnezzar, your God is not my God, nor is your right. statue my God. Um, and, 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 and also they say that their God is able to deliver, but whether he will is another matter. 
whether he wants to or whatever, but they still won't. Right, uh, right. Him. Like, even if he doesn't, we're not worshiping your stupid idol. That's gutsy, man. It is. So doesn't he remember in the last chapter where he said, of a truth, to Daniel, he said this, of a truth, your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. And clearly, that doesn't really uh, resonate with him anymore. <laughs> right. He forgot. He, so forgot. he, he, yeah. did, believe, he did believe it at that time. Yeah. Um, but again, maybe it just ties back into who he thinks or what he thinks his position is. Um, he, he calls the shots now, you yeah. know, so I don't know. I'm not really sure, but it's odd. Um, I think we can get through 19 through 21. Okay. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. So then Nebuchadnezzar, it says in verse 19, then he's full of fury. Now he was full of fury back in verse 13, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so my, my guess is either, well, actually the next verse or the rest of verse 19 may fill us in as to what happened, all that fury, because he was super angry at 13. Um, but the second part of verse 19, it says, and the form of his visage was changed. I don't know what it says in yours. That's the second half he, of 19. His attitude towards them changed. Yeah. Is that the same thing? What's visage? Well, that's interesting. Um, this is what I have. It says the form of his visage was changed. The word form is the same word as idol or hmm. image. Okay. So the image or the idolatrous image or the statue however you want to call it of his face or his visage was altered so question is it seems to suggest it was hiding his real face the form was hiding the real face there the form it, does it mean that he was pretending to be kind to them and saying maybe you maybe you just didn't hear what i said here's what i said it and would, now they're yeah. saying, look, no, we're not, we're not doing that. And we wouldn't do it even if we die. Sorry. And then he was like, what? Right. So his, That's mask, what I envisioned. his mask came off and his real yeah. intention seems to show here. Mm. Um, so it makes, did we read, did it say um, seven times hotter? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, so what's seven times? What, what, what might that mean? Seven times. Well, isn't seven God's number? Uh, actually, funny you say that. I have that a little snippet from that guy, E.W. Bullinger. He said, we have just seen that six is emphatically the number of man in the Bible. We come now to the great number of spiritual perfection, a number which therefore occupies so large a place in the works, and especially in the word of God as being inspired by the Holy Spirit. Huh. So that's what seven is? That's well, I mean, it go it, he goes into an exhaustive detail. I just read the summary. <laughs> no. I, I just there's just not enough hours to devote. I'll take his word for it. Gotcha. <laughs> You know, um, what else is seven? Like seven days. Okay, seven days of God. We've talked about that that before. Uh, could be could be a metaphor for a tribulation period, which. Oh yeah. Wait, what is that? Other... Wait, say that again. Tribulation period it could be a metaphor for that. Mm -hmm. Which that would make sense? The fiery furnace. That would be like really. Was this a movie or am I thinking of the Bible, The Seven Deadly Sins? Oh, that's a movie. 
<laughs> but it might be. The, the tribulation period Bourbon. is very well maybe misinterpreted in the Bible, Meg. It's supposed to be a seven year period that is where everything like in the world goes nuts and it's supposed to be right before the coming of Jesus whether it's translated correctly or interpreted correctly I don't think anybody knows I think for years people thought oh yeah it's we're right at the doorstep of the tribulation maybe we are yeah uh, but I don't know if, I don't 100 percent know if that's been interpreted correctly so maybe it is but the point being is it seems to be a period where it's something is seven times worse. Um, oh, no, yeah. We also know that fire is something that God uses for his purification. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Oh, yeah, that's true. So they're bound up in their coats and leggings, caps, and other garments. So... They take them, they, they tie them up, I think, in their own stuff, right? In their own outfits kind of thing. Right. But whatever they're wearing, that's what I imagined. Yeah. And then it says certain mighty men of Babylon cast them into the midst of the fiery furnace. So, um, and, and if I'm not mistaken, let me just look at, we have like a minute left, but didn't it say... Okay, so it says they're bound here. Yep. The men died. Well, that's the next verst. Yeah, that's I think that's the next. Yeah. yeah, and I thought the, okay, so first they're bound up in their own clothing, garments, leggings, or whatever. And then I think eventually they're also bound up by some of these mighty men um, in verse. Yeah they're, yeah, they're bound and they were cast in the midst. Wait, where are the mighty men at? Mighty men are at 20. Commanded some of the strongest soldiers. Oh, they, bu they bind them. Valor, who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they're bound by those guys too. Yes. They're seen by the, the, the mighty men and by the, within with their own clothes too. So we're going to cut off. We'll be right back, okay? Okay. Okay. 